So I came up here to record our episode of Star Wars, and I walked through the living room, and Return of the Jedi was on. My dad was watching Return of the Jedi. So I'm just in a revolving door of Star Wars right now, and I'm not it's happy about so it. Odd. Happens so often now because it's always on TV. Yeah. Like I can seriously remember as a kid, almost every other day, at the very least, Star Wars would be on like TNT. Yeah. At least once a week. At the very yeah. least, once a week. And now it's like we just went, hey, you remember when you were a kid and Star Wars was on once a week on TNT? What if that was just life forever, but you had to watch it? Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Star Wars Every Week Forever, the podcast in which we watch one Star Wars movie every week forever. This week, The Last Jedi. Hey Ben, how was your watch? This movie does not need to be two and a half hours long. It really doesn't. I mean, you could have you could have stopped with this movie doesn't have to be stop. <laughs> I, I feel like Ryan and JJ just decided we're going to make movies that just feel like they should end, but then go on for another half an hour. Oh, we're back. Yeah. But they actually go on for another 50 minutes. What's yeah. up, Ryan? We're back. Nice to, to be see fair, you, the, the prequels feel exactly the same in most cases, though. But not as. Like, in the prequels, you feel like the movie should end and there's like... 20 minutes left and you're like okay this isn't that bad in the sequels it's like especially this movie it's like this movie should be over right 40 minutes fuck yeah i got to the part this week where it was like uh luke shows up and i'm like oh great we're at like the very end and i looked at the thing i'm like how is there still 40 minutes of fucking there was film not left 40 minutes film? left there was not 40 it was minutes close left. it was about 25 I know because right around that part I check. No. But I understand your pain. This movie, I still don't mind this movie. It's way too fucking long. Chris, how was your watch? You know, it's curious how they call it The Last Jedi, yet there's a whole other movie with Jedi in it. Is that where we're at tonight? <sighs> I you know what isn't that, in another movie? I appreciate that you said that and then picked up a giant glass of wine and took a sip. Oh, it's so small. Like, Fuck I did a giant. good job with that comment. That that was your approach. I I did a good job. I, I made a good point. <laughs> no, it's a very stupid point, but this is a very stupid movie, and this is also a very <laughs> stupid podcast that we do every week. So it's par for the course. My watch was fine. It's an all right movie. If you take yeah. it as a standalone movie, it's fine. Yeah. If I ignore the consequences of this movie, it's a fine movie. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, I feel like, you know, for all three of us, this movie is hard because either the way it warps The Force Awakens or the way nothing from this movie is followed up on in the next movie and it's practically rewritten... I think that's uh, I, I think that's what really makes this watch hard. Also, it's so fucking long. I have I have a point, but first, Jay, how was your watch? It was great. I had a fantastic time. It was great. The sync was fantastic. Absolutely incredible. It was Very a bit good. Of a, it was a bit of a complicated sync, was it not? It was actually well. I had to restart the playlist this episode, yeah. which I suspected, which I suspected when I was watching. The Force Awakens last week, I was like, Wee. there's not enough of this playlist to get all the way through The Last Jedi, which the thing that happened was early in the rotations, I had to remove songs that were doubles. If the doubles stood, I'd gotten at least a little bit into Rise of Skywalker, but because I removed so many doubles, that's what happened. But great watch. Great watch. Too long, but the sync was great. Too too long i and feel like point, all all these movies are too long like they are they really are 
the original trilogy is the easiest because all the movies are kind of sh- like like reasonably they're reasonable length yeah, movies yeah. which is crazy because for movies in general they were long when they came out but yeah compared, back in the 70s and 80s the movies that bookend the original trilogy it, it's it it really is night and day like i sit down and watch a new hope and every time i sit down to watch a new hope i'm like oh it's over already thank christ whereas i sit down and watch the last jedi i'm like uh, fucking hour and 20 minutes okay here we go i'm i'm already losing my vigor to watch this movie that i technically like <laughs> that's really what it is repetition is killing this movie for me not the movie repetition <laughs> i feel like now strap in because i feel like i actually i've hit one of my first big epiphanies of the podcast i think i finally figured it out i think i finally figured out what bothers me so fucking much about this movie i figured out what it is finally i think this movie We've touched on it briefly. We've touched on it a few times. This movie, Ryan Johnson went out of his way to do stuff different, to do a different interpretation of the Force as a whole, to kind of turn things on its head, which is fine. I've said before on this topic, like, I'm I'm the guy who likes stories occasionally where the good guys don't win and, you know, everything goes. Like, I like when stuff is different than the norm, you know, when you go outside of the, you know, the... Uh, stereotypical stories you tend to kind of get, you know? Yeah. So I, I, w- I kind of like the idea when this movie came out and I saw it, I left the theater going, oh, that's fucking different. They did a lot of different stuff, but oh, I'm interested to see where it goes. I think this movie really is hurt by the movie that follows it because it's just a temporary divergence and then we kind of slide right back in to like the same tropes and the same predictable star wars i feel like if they had done one or the other if we had kind of gotten a middle movie that just followed the tropey star wars like oh it's just very simple fun kind of kid focused or at least kid directed uh high fantasy with sci-fi elements you know like it would have been fine or if they had fully fucking gone the opposite way like you know if they had fully embraced the ryan johnson vision and rise of skywalker had followed the same tone and gone in the same weird directions where it just completely fucking threw out everything that we had done before like it changed everything you know it finally challenged the jedi like what the jedi were and it started hitting all of those interesting points that we had only seen in, like, Knights of the Old Republic 2 and a couple of other pieces of EU content where they really delved into, like, well, what is the Force, really? You know, if they had gone all in on one or the other and just picked one, I I think I would have been fine. It's because they briefly dipped their toes into something interesting. Now, I will say... I don't think it would have fully saved it if they had gone all the way, because Ryan Johnson did still completely fuck up Finn's arc. Yeah, no, yeah, that's that's irredeemable still. Like, as much as I seem to be the one that still likes this movie, there's no no excuse for that. But, you know, I, I really think I only don't enjoy this movie now as much as I did when I first saw it is because of Rise of Skywalker. Just making it pointless, you know, like... Like, that's really what it is, is this movie. Really what happened was J.J. picked up after this movie, and he was like, all right, I'm just going to steamroll through the story I was originally going to tell and just yeah. pretend like none of that happened. Or or worse, just say, just build your entire plot around D, like, just yeah. taking away the importance of that, that movie whatsoever. Well, I mean, yeah. if... To be, to be fair... It probably didn't affect a ton of the original vision because, like, we saw a little bit. We've talked about it before. The script has come out for uh, Trevorrow's movie. Like, it was it was different. It was very different. Kind of, 
in it, different ways than Ryan's movie was different, but it was still different enough. It's like they reeled it in even further after this. It's like this one went too far outside the norm. And they were like, oh, no, we got to pull it back. We got to pull it yeah. all the way back. But, like, at the end of the day, I feel like J.J. would have still... If he made this movie, if J.J. Abrams made this movie, I can almost guarantee he would have also killed off Luke. I can oh, almost for sure. 100% guarantee he would have also killed off Luke. Yeah. He would have just done it in the tropey way where Kylo would have actually, like, beat him physically and killed him. Yeah. You know, like... He, he would have just done the overly tropey thing, which would have been fine again. Mm, one or the other. I, I, I probably would have been a little very angry if that happened. So would I. I don't. Uh, I'm sure they could have spun it in a way where it would have been fine, whatever. But I wouldn't have been thrilled at that either. That's the thing I find interesting. The more we watch these movies, and it only happens very occasionally because most of the time we exist on this transcendent level where our brains match up with what we're thinking at all times um one thing that i think this movie especially always seems to show when we sit down and record it is that we have different ideas of what we enjoy out of the series because i could give a shit less if if the original trilogy characters died in in the only way that i would be upset is carrie fisher being propelled out of the fucking ship the way she was but the only way i would be upset is if it was in some way a discredit to the character like well no like I, that's like my my point there was more uh the idea of kylo defeating luke in a duel yeah. what does it matter would have because there's there's no way in hell you're gonna convince me that kylo is a superior duelist to luke skywalker uh, Luke Skywalker, think, according to these movies, can barely fucking not here's, like like he's a barely developed lightsaber duelist in Return of the Jedi. Here's the thing. I think two things. First off, I think it needs to be acknowledged that God, this is gonna be it's happened. We're gonna get to one of those really nerdy like comic book shop discussions yeah, it's, again. It's gonna be one of <laughs> I'm those. I'm so episodes. excited. I'm so excited. Well, in um, issue 73 of the Star so, Wars annual. No, so what's this happening? Is this turning into clerks? Do we need do we yeah, need somebody yeah. to walk in and give their opinion on how to build the Death Star here? Is that where we're at? I don't I don't know that I would be mad if Kylo beat Luke in a lightsaber duel, only because I feel like I feel like the way it's always written in Star Wars is the Sith are willing to cross that boundary that the jedi yeah. aren't so in a lot of ways it kind of always dooms the jedi to never really be able to beat the sith you know what i mean like there's always that feel of like the sith just coming in and fucking steamrolling the jedi because they're just willing to fucking do whatever you know so i wouldn't be mad if they necessarily had kylo beat luke because he's willing to tap into different parts of the force yeah. or whatever you can spin it i don't you know there's there's ways to spin it you want to know, I at one point, I was actually thinking of this because I was going to avoid talking about the Trevorrow script, because Ben said on this episode, Last Rotation, that he fucking hates, he's totally bored by behind-the-scenes talk. Well, I was going to mention that and totally. then cut it off. I have just learned something about myself. I, I am immediately bored when we start talking about, like, power levels and duels between two uh, characters yeah. and how to yeah. theoretically. And you want to know what it is? It's because I'm a fucking wrestling fan, and everybody reads too much into how fuck, how fucking, what, what a fucking kick out means and shit like that. I oh, could I care were... less. I mean, listen, I don't care anyone... who's theoretically better than who, just show me a duel. <laughs> Anyone who grew up hanging around comic book shops, this is like your shit, you know? It's just fucking two guys in the corner like, yeah. well, Green Lantern could totally fucking beat fucking, uh, you know, he could beat uh, Hawkeye in a fight because, you know, arrows and some nerd like, oh, yellow arrows. Oh, yellow arrows. To all oh, the three arrows. people who will get that reference. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, hypothetically, you can defeat Green Lantern by just beating him to death with a banana. Um, anyway. <laughs> I will also say, th this point that you, brought, that you brought up, Chris, is interesting to me because I was actually just thinking about this today. 
um, how you've said in the past that, you know, this movie doesn't feel right for a middle movie. And I've always disagreed with that point because in the past, the way that you've framed it is that the middle movie isn't the right place to put, to question the entire plot. Whereas Empire Strikes Back is built like that, like most middle movies are. This explains to me what you were trying to say, because I totally understand exactly what you're saying. If you're going to start a story that's very traditionally Star Wars, put a middle story in there that is not at all traditionally Star Wars and actually deconstructs it, and then end it with a traditionally Star Wars movie, it may, you're absolutely right. The middle movie should not be non-traditional. I, I totally get what you're saying. You can you can do. I think I'm saying more than that though. It's like I'm you can do you can do a non-traditional movie in the middle, but like that end movie has to also be yeah. pretty non-traditional. You can't immediately jump back to MacGuffin and trope after trope after doing something completely different. You know what I mean? Like you can't you can't have a movie like The Last Jedi that is actually four Star Wars filled with a little nuance. And then do Rise of Skywalker, where Oscar Isaac's just like, well, somehow Palpatine's alive. Anyway, um, Charlie <laughs> from Lost, would you like to come over here and fucking explain? Would you like to Lord dump? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, who? Charlie from Lost, from Star Wars. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, there. Excuse me. Thank you for clearing that up. Fucking. I'm going to rocket man this now. No, I, I feel bad for Ryan to a certain extent because I think that's what he thought was going to happen. It wasn't until he was late into production that he realized that the person that he knew had a, a good script to follow his was gone. Yeah, I... I can see how bored Ben is with this conversation I feel bad for. <laughs> well, I, didn't realize you were, I didn't realize you were incredibly bored about this conversation. I mean, I'm just chilling. <laughs> He's bored. No, Continue your chilling. point, Chris. <laughs> cool is my point. <laughs> I was derailed mightily. What we were I'm talking about is, the if 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 they wanted to appeal to the hardcore Star Wars fan base and follow up the subversion worse. of expectations, I think the ideal strategy would be in the middle of rise of skywalker so they so here, here's what they should have done mm -hmm. to, to continue mm -hmm. ryan's subversion mm -hmm. of expectations so mm -hmm. when they get to kajimi this yeah. is a long walk they man. find You're zori bliss walk. so when they when they find zori bliss they're not just like ducking in alleys and shit what they're doing is they're hiding in a crowd and the reason there's this huge crowd is long because they're at, at a pod racing ring what a walk <laughs> What a walk! Calvin, no. total subversion. We were calling, of we were calling you out. Star Wars fans would go nuts. It would have been beautiful. I wish I could put the video of that in in the YouTube cut because, like, <laughs> me and Chris were all, uh, just like knew from moment two <laughs> this long walk that you were taking exactly where it was going, and you stuck to your guns. And made it a longer <laughs> walk even than that. <laughs> you you did a half mile at less than a half a mile an hour. You you really you really got that was you milked that was it. really that was really a beautiful thing to watch. It was like oh, watching like just just, for just, three. just watching a professional just pull up and let it go at the three point line. Just fucking. Watching a professional pull absolutely everything out of his ass. Watching a professional do exactly that while he's getting booed the shit out. Fuck it, just drifting in the first place, middle finger extended out of the fucking window. <laughs> just, it's the meme of the guy with the you like didn't... with the metal, so like throwing the champagne you... everywhere. And then he's in like fucking third place. It's like uh, it's like the spy movies where it's like they gotta do one last job, and Ben's just like whips off the sunglasses. He's like, it was the perfect job. Perfect. It's a long-winded pod racing reference. In and out. 
I feel like we had a really long conversation about The Last Jedi. I want to bring up something that we've been meaning to bring up on this podcast since before we started it. Oh? The the Fast and Furious pod racing script that we have repeatedly said we were going to talk about on this show and ne- have never done it. You don't remember this? Refresh refreshed my memory about this. I will, I will link it. I oh, have, man. I brought it up. Many this feels times. like a thing that I'm gonna be really happy you've reminded me about. I'm scared. I, I need to preface I've never seen a Fast and Furious movie. I oh, am oh, watching it with friends so right now, but that's not the point. I, like, so, for the first time, so I'm watching them right now, but that's not why I'm doing this. I realized the other day, for some reason, because Vin Diesel gets brought up a lot in my life, that if you start referring to Vin Diesel as Vincent Diesel, it's a lot funnier for some reason. <laughs> or Vinny Diesel, you know. Just... Vinny D. Vinny D. I will forever now refer to him as Vinny D. All right, here we go. So this has been, I, I will link it in the YouTube copy and I'll put it up on Twitter. But this has been brought up behind the scenes since before our first episode ever went up. And it felt like the appropriate time to bring it up because, you know, we talked a lot about The Last Jedi in this episode. So let's indulge in some bullshit. So this is a script that Brian David Gilbert wrote and then pitched to uh, pitched to Disney, which they did, never responded to, called The Fast and the can, Forciest. Okay. I was going to say, can <laughs> I read this real quick? But yeah, let's beat do me it. To let's it. Do it. Hold on, let's do a script read. Oh, God. Oh, no, God. no, we're not going to yes. sight read this right now, are we? Oh, it's hey, 25 yeah. pages. We listen, can't do that now. Listen, we have to reward ourselves. We actually talked about the movie we're on for a long time, all right? <laughs> we got through the think... Brussels sprouts, all right? Do you think BDG will be ang- like will try to sue us if we do this? I, was say, I guess he this... can't sue us because it's Star Wars. Fuck it, let's do it. Okay. Okay, so... Brian David Gilbert is. Uh, he is. He used to work for Polygon. He used to do a, um, their uh, uh, Unraveled show where he would just create insane theories and stuff like that. He um, is, and is now this the guy who like for a summer sat down and read every single like Halo book. Yes, it is. is it? Okay, is I love it. I love this man. Oh, it's this yeah. guy. I don't think he would sue us. He seems cool. He seems friend cool. of the show, Brian friend of the David show, Gilbert. Brian David <laughs> Gilbert. God, I wish. Hey, Brian David Gilbert, we're a couple years apart, but we have the same birthday. Come on the show, Brian David do Gilbert. Do you want to be a friend of the show? Yeah. Come, uh, come do David one of your, come do one of those wonderful whiteboard videos of yours, but Star Wars every week forever related. Nah, he doesn't do that anymore. Now he has a YouTube channel where he will put up random stuff, and they either end up being a horror movie or they don't. And you never know which it is. Can we... Can we for real do, like, a special episode where we do a script read of this? Because, my God. Yes. Yes. One of my favorite things about this entire script is that about, what is it, two or three pages down, where is it? There's there's a cut in this entire script that is the most amusing thing I've ever seen in my life. And I have to find it. This is very good. Just, I'm skimming it very quickly as I'm Yeah, I'm skimming it. through. This is very on, good. This is very, very good. On page two, on page two, there's an author's note that says, author's note, at this point, I closed the 12 Wikipedia tabs I had open <laughs> and decided to take more a more fast and furious <laughs> approach to canon and in-universe realism. <laughs> I feel that deep down in my bones, like that writer instinct of like, I have everything open for the lore. This is too much. I'm just going to bullshit my way through the rest of this. This, this, this is fantastic. So for those of you that don't know, we won't read it. We won't put you through that. Yeah, we're not going to do that now. But maybe, maybe maybe one day as a special. One day. Maybe that's like a future like goal for something. I don't know. But go spread this because it is comedy gold and also sure. Disney. We'll, we'll get in touch with Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> Kathleen! We'll, we'll Kathleen, it's been Kathleen! Kathleen, it's been a while, but baby, we're home! <laughs> and we've got a, an opportunity for you. 
the opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, Brian David Gilbert, Gilbert, Karen Hahn, please, 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 please spread this around. And our fans spread it around because it's very good. I have repeatedly tried to talk about this on the show, but it just never happens. We all sit down and we forget about it. Ben, you look like you're in such misery. I'm in absolute bliss. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you forgot about this. I got... I got... to Today is Christmas in July because I got Jay to organically talk for... 15-ish oh, minutes it? about it pod was racing. Not, it was not organic. You assaulted us with talking for a really Shh, long time Jay, about something we knew was a pot. No, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you talked a really long time about a pod racing gag we all knew was coming, and then I decided to bring it up because you had already brought it up. Because I was trying to get away from this bit you had done. You did an impressive job. You got me to talk about pod racing on the show. It was not organic by any stretch of the imagination. You want to talk about my sink? Uh, kitchen or bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I quit the show. I quit the show. I'm done. Uh, on, it's on been that a topic fun year, before, y'all. On that topic before we get to the sink. Uh, we need to talk about the shower. I'm done. Because Jay, death is the only way out, right? Jay, I, I would Jay may come and murder me. Uh, over the week, I I installed a new shower head. Yeah, let's talk about this. This, this is again. not so, a joke. I actually installed the Darth Vader shower head. It's <laughs> not a joke. Yo, Darth Vader shower head. I can't. I can't <laughs> shut. No. No. I can't express how much this is not a joke. I will put up a picture for you. I swear to God, Chris is moving around a lot, and I'm very afraid he's going to come up with a fucking Darth Vader shower head. <laughs> no, I wish. I, almost... I never want to do major merchandise again, because I have learned that it is irresponsible to ben, do it with you two. Ben might have actually saved me from buying it, because I was literally, <laughs> I had it pulled up <laughs> While we were recording the last episode, I had it pulled up in my eBay cart, and I'm like, I could buy this thing. It's like 25 bucks. That's halfway through gonna... this episode. And, and I got a fucking message on Discord from Ben of, don't tell Jay, and a picture. It's the, the checkout screen. screen. It's the checkout screen on eBay. Now, I'm a little disappointed that you wouldn't reveal it on the podcast, Ben. I thought he... I... Had... I, I wanted to hold it together, but but the temptation proved too great. Well, I, I hope you're happy. There's now a picture on the YouTube copy of your bathroom. My bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Friend of the show, Ben's bathroom. Ben's shower. So, so the sink. Picture of the shower. As in S-Y-N-C. In sync, yes. As we, in we they might be about. giants. Friend of the show, in sync. Friend of the show, in sync. I'm sorry, Jay. Jay, I'm sorry. No, Jay, come back. Jay. And just like that, she was gone. <laughs> just teleport. <out. laughs> it's that's that was like the, the scene I'm from done. fucking done. <laughs> done. Absolutely done. <laughs> I'm so I'm so done. I'm done with the it's both like, of you and your it, shit. We had, like this is what happens, huh? We had a semi-intelligent conversation for 20 <laughs> minutes, and then we entirely, like, I don't know. We just fucking saw a butterfly, and we're like, I'm going to harass – let's harass each other for, like, a good 20 minutes. That was – Jay just did the the Skype equivalent of the end of the Truman Show when he finds <laughs> the door that's painted like the rest of the sky and just walks through it. Spoilers so. for the Truman Show. Spoiler alert for the Truman Show. <laughs> I'm talking about They Might Be Giants, and I'm taking you with me, whether you like it or not. Please do. Fucking see what I have to deal with here. We love you.
Unfortunately, I love you too, but it is unfortunate at times. Oh. I love you, Ben. Heart doth shudder. It's <laughs> the part of the show where Ben and I make each other laugh with dumb facial expressions. Yeah, that's. <laughs> if you're wondering, that's exactly what happens when I read. If you hear random laughter. Or, like, when, when Jay's setting something up, or I'm setting something up, and Chris and I just fucking bust yeah. it. It's because we're making dumbass faces. <laughs> Which I forgot until this moment that Jay, when she edits through the Skype copy, sees the video, so she gets to watch us do that. Yeah, that's what happens if you're unaware. Um... Usually what happens is the way I found out that they make faces at each other when we did the first They Might Be Giants bit is I heard them laughing in the background. And I was like, man, I'm really killing it. I'd love to see their faces and how they were reacting to it because I have I have a different camera that's set off to the side. So I'm not watching that Skype bit when I when I'm doing that. I turned around and they were just fucking making faces at each other. I was like, wow, I'm really that uninteresting. <laughs> no, it's not it. I just have the attention span of we a craisin. Just, we both have <laughs> horrific attention span. Craisin? <laughs> craisin. Well, that's, that's why, honestly, and I think anyone else who has, like, ADHD would know, like, that's why I think the video has helped these episodes and why they've gotten better since we started doing them. I'm the type of person where I'll have the TV going and also have an earbud in with, like, my phone playing yeah. something. Like, I need multiple things doing things or I go nuts. So <laughs> what do you need, Chris? And, and I need multiple things doing things. <laughs> Um, you want to move those hands just like that again while saying that? <laughs> just vote uh, by the end of the night. I feel it's important. I'm not upset with either of them. I'm harassing them endlessly because they spent that their time harassing me this episode. <laughs> so. And here's the part where I'm going to read They Might Be Giants things and they're going to make faces at each other. So here we go. <laughs> Uh, the lyrics, if you swallowed up the planet from, or so I have read, play during the extreme close-up on the opening planet. Uh, Elephant with its 60s style chorus was great for the phone prank, uh, which is a hell of a thing to say about Star Wars. That sounds like an AO3 tag. That really sounds like an AO3 tag. It do. <laughs> the slow and funky thinking machine was terrible for the bombing scene. But Rose's sister's death being covered by So Crazy for Books, someone bragging about how much they love to read and how many books they own, was fucking gut-busting in the worst way possible. What, wait, the why that was, specifically? Because it was just somebody, it was from a kid's album, somebody bragging about how much they love books, and this woman is giving her life Like, just for... the juxtaposition <laughs> of... Yeah, this was the last, oh the little God. bit, first bit to this is the, the last of the kids' albums. It was great. Apophenia is a song about extreme irrational paranoia and hallucinations, which plays over Luke and Ray just before the, before and during the start of uh, the discovery of the sacred texts, which was a great sync, and also implied that Luke was just a ghost this entire movie, which actually is backed up by... Uh, everything that happens inside of the movie. So, uh, really, really good. Um, I Am Alone, a song that is also about paranoia, but has a big spy assassin feel, plays over Kylo not having the heart to fire on Leia, uh, which is wild. The lyrics, the fox has been outfoxed again, playing over Kylo coming to grips with what just happened in front of him was fantastic. The fox has been outfoxed again. <laughs> R2 brings up the Leia hologram just as Trouble Awful Devil Evil begins, a song generally about your worst decisions plaguing you in your tired hours. But more specifically, uh, that's a metaphor. More specifically, if you take the lyrics literally, about seeing the atrocities you committed in past lives in your dreams. Uh, very good what? for that scene. It also works really well for Poe's interaction with Haldo. If you haven't listened to They Might Be Giants by now, like, generally they speak through metaphors, 
but if you take the metaphors very literally, it's fucked up. There's a lot of really confused people. Probably the last, oh, I don't know, eight episodes of this podcast who have oh, never heard of the Mighty Giants song. It's a failed experiment they are I've very good it. if you've not listened to they might be giants yeah. if you get anything out of this podcast perhaps it's discovering they might be giants it's it really is an experience i've done my job then i've done my job um i've enjoyed it it made me not listen mostly to star wars for a while so <laughs> it was a bad idea yeah i don't care <laughs> just like this podcast was it a bad idea? Yeah, I don't care. Uh, impossibly now, a song about trying to ignore the dying of the planet at the hands of pollution plays over the first half of Ray connecting to the Force, and it's a shame because it cuts out right before, uh, cuts out from being transcended just before she discovers the darkness. It's so close to re to perfection. Just about 10 seconds off, although I'll Be Haunting You playing over Luke leaving in fear for what happened with Ray also works really well. The song also cuts into the first lines of the second Kylo Ray Bond vision, which is good. Got Getting Up So Down is a terrible follow-up. Uh, it does have a really electronic funk to it that seems to put a lot of importance on material possessions, and that works fantastically as the movie transitions into Canto Bite. Very, very, very good. It also drops the bravado and recognizes the thought process of the song is terrible, just as they witness the, uh, uh, I put the names of the horse people here, the, the horse, uh, the, the horse race animals here. I don't know how to pronounce it. So the horse race animals, this word, the fathers, the, yeah, that, that, what Ben just said, this word, the thing Ben just said, this word. Black Ops Chris, Alt. Chris is going this word with like a hand motion and everything as if people are gonna see him on screen. And he does not know sign language, so he's just I doing don't. something. Well, no, I'm no, no. This, it's like, like, in, like he's doing this as if he's putting the word, the word up. I imagine Jay will put the word there. This is the word we're talking about. Now nah, Chris is signing fathers. Perfectly. <sighs> Perfect ASL. As far as you know. Uh, Black Ops Alt kicked in just uh, as Holdo said steady on, which is great. Uh, Let's Get This Over With kicks in as the horse aliens escape the chase, which is how I feel generally on Canto Bite. Um, the song By the Time You Get This plays over the over Ray's uh, vision scene, and as she approaches the mirror, the lyrics play, By the Time You Get This Note Will No Longer Be Alive, Our Skulls Are Smiling Still. At the thought of things to come, we can confidently know that you'll enjoy a better world when the evils that we faced will at last be laid to rest. And it's the only time before this and in the future that the Ray vision is good con with the context of Rise of Skywalker. It's the only time it will ever happen. Because them, like, disappearing behind after these lyrics are dropped are really good, and you're not paying attention to me. You're no, laughing at I each am. other, aren't you? I am. No, I'm <laughs> listening, and I'm, I'm I'm following you down this rabbit hole. <laughs> you just realized why this is so great, My why my entire uh, period has been – period of watching this rotation has been fantastic. I Like Fun plays over the Yoda Luke sing, ter scene. Terrible sync, but very funny. Uh, I had to restart the playlist right as Finn makes his suicide run, um, and the second chorus of Everything Right is Wrong Again came in so perfectly when Rose hit the ship. I, it was transcendent and very, very good. The song also breaks into this distorted slow piece as they talk and Rose passes out, then kicks back into its normal speed just as it transitions away. Very, very good sync. Uh, the song then cuts out just as Leia sits down. And then put your hands inside the puppet head kicks in as Luke walks in, which is great because that Luke is basically a puppet. Great stuff. Don't Let Start kicks in just as the AT and the Grill AT fire stops, which is a fantastic sync. The lyrics, nobody in this world ever gets what they want, and that is beautiful. Everybody dies frustrated and sad, and that is beautiful. Playing over Kylo approaching Luke is also just exquisite. 
A hideaway folk family kicking in as they realize they can escape by going further in is also fantastic. It also kicks into this rock breakdown as Kylo makes his first lunge and jumps before jumps back before the second Matrix lunge, that thing where Luke does the Matrix thing. Um, and then it kicks into 32 foot steps, uh, which is a fantastic sync for the end of the duel. It is the first time ever that the duel a duel in these Star Wars movies has had a good sync, and it was this fucking duel. Yeah. Um, Rabbit Child, meanwhile, is a terrible sync for Luke's death. Uh, the lyrics, shiny marble dice from Nothing's Gonna Change My Clothes kick in as Kylo watches Ray leave the Force Connection and pick up those fucking dice. Those fucking uh, she, dice. She was a hotel detective plays over the end of the movie, which, you know, bad sync. Uh, is there anything else? Did I miss anything? Uh, I've been seeing things contains the lyrics, the lady, that that lady, that lady must have ditched the kid, must have ditched the kid, hitched the down, hitched the down, what she's up to now, what she's up to now, which plays just as Haldo fires up her ship to collide it with the fleet. Very good. I think that's the only one I missed. I think that's, that's about it. Uh, the song Who Are the Electors, an educational song They Might Be Giants did for the 2020 election about the elector... The, the elector step of the election progress plays over Kylo making himself fascist king, which is very, very good. That's it. That got very meta there at the end. I mean, they might be giants as meta. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's it. That was my watch. It was very good. And I hope going back to the beginning of the playlist and knowing that I won't get another kid's album... Uh, will make the Rise of Skywalker watch more bearable than generally the Rise of Skywalker Skywalker watch is. You all right, Ben? Yeah, I'm just thinking about how I have to watch Rise of Skywalker next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, uh, y'all ever notice that Ray's name is only one letter away from? Ren, as in Kylo Ren. Da -da -da. What is up with you today? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> is, is this a new bit you're doing? <laughs> ah, is this a bit you're doing? <laughs> Lord Vader. Lord Vader, is this a bit? Is it a bit when you just I love say how even in my shit. in my most exhausted when I'm rubbing my face, just like emotionally exhausted, I fucking slip ah. into voices and bits with no problem. Ah yes. Is Lord this Vader. a bit you're doing? Lord Vader, what's <laughs> Ah, Papa Pelps. No Palpatine or Vader in this movie, goddammit. <laughs> no, Palpatine's not back yet. No. He's just every voice that's ever been inside your head. He's still just chilling out on Exegol, just with that robot fucking hand Strang popping his ass across the fucking... Strangely, for, you know, Rise of Skywalker is at the very bottom of all of our lists of, like, the worst movies. Strangely, I think the thing that we have accepted fastest is Palpatine being back just for the bits. We have fully just, embraced Palpatine coming back for Rise of Skywalker just to include Palpatine in more bits. I haven't, it, I wouldn't say I've embraced it, but it's really become like a, yeah, I mean, sure. I, 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 mean, I want to chalk that up to like a coping mechanism. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're, here's we're the thing. using the bits to cope with the shitty world building in that movie. Here's the thing. This is why I have repeatedly said you should not take your Star Wars opinions from us, because our opinions of these movies are hopelessly fucked up, because we're forced to watch them. First of all, we don't want to watch them, so that makes some of the good movies bad at times. Second of all, we read way too much into shit. Third of all, we warp them with our own fucking visions of them. I, I You should not take your Star Wars opinions from us. We're fucking stupid. I had a point. It's about coping via Palpatine bits? Oh, yeah, I still don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember it. 
that that's the important takeaway anyway don't take us seriously what i just did should make you not take us seriously i swear i had a good point it's lost i feel like it's important to point out occasionally and maybe we've reached the point where we should point out it again at least on my end and i know i bitch especially about the sequel trilogy a lot um i feel it's important to point out i still enjoy watching these movies like yeah definitely there's certain weeks this week being one of them because it was a very busy week on my end there's certain weeks where i'm like fuck i gotta watch a star wars movie today <laughs> i gotta fit that in somewhere in between all the other stuff i gotta do oh my god that was a hundred percent me this week yeah yeah well, this was the only time I wasn't excited going into a watch because not be I like this rotation because I've always been like they might be giants I'm so excited this yeah. time I was just like yeah it's so fucking long and I'm stressed out about when this will end yeah but like I'm still excited every time I see like I mean every time I hear the just da, 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 and the fucking the crawl starts I'm just there's a little bit of that nostalgia like that does not exist for me <laughs> yeah no that's that's like, dead for me. How the Chris, fuck am I the most Chris, I now crown fucking... you the the joyous one of the podcast. We, yeah, we need to we need to now change around the crowns. Jesus, it's... that's depressing. We've gotten to the point where I'm the one who's the most <laughs> well-adjusted. I genuinely I... have a worse time watching the prequels mm-hmm. than I do the sequels. Genuinely, I have a worse time watching the prequels than the sequels just because. Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones are just such a fucking slog, whereas other than The Last Jedi, which I would say is the best of the sequels, but so fucking long, at least these movies are pretty to watch. Like, it's just like, I can turn my brain off to these a little bit better than Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, whereas I can't, yeah, I can't do that with the prequels. See, I'm, Those are I'm the weeks I hate of, the most. I'm kind of the other way around. And I I don't have any logic behind it. I just like you you are familiar with them. They are nostalgic. Yeah, I mean yeah. the prequels. It's it's all about nostalgia because like I grew up on them. It's a good. It was a big part of you know my early yeah. years and everything. So like yeah, I as an adult know that these fucking movies are silly as hell and the the weird little spin Jar Jar does is dumb as shit. But I'm never gonna not enjoy watching the prequels. I'm gonna make fun of them I the whole think... time. I think the concept of this podcast disproves that. <laughs> well, I mean, I still have a good time making fun of them. If I well, was doing different. this podcast, every time I watched Phantom Menace with my wife or, like, my kids, I'd be like, well, that's dumb. And that would be the end of it. But now I just do a podcast where I get it out of my system every week. Which is good, because I get all my Star Wars bitching out here, so maybe I won't fuck up Star Wars for my kids, you know? <laughs> with my, with my bitching true. about Star Wars. That's true. Our kids should never be allowed to watch this sh- to listen to the show. Yeah. <laughs> Future children, stop hey, listening to the show. Stop it. Stop Go it. Bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. <laughs> I don't care what time of day it is. Go to bed. Yeah. Turn off the internet on your Elon Musk fucking implants and yeah. go to bed. It's 2 p.m. I, Mars my kids don't exist yet. Hours. I've already cursed at them. I, I haven't had kids yet, and I've already cursed at my kids. That's fantastic. I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> I wanted to mention something we brought up last week. Uh-oh. We were, we were really making fun of the BACTA thing, where BACTA all of a sudden isn't a thing. But, like, it clearly still is. It's just a different way to be administered rather than the really expensive stick an oxygen yeah. tank down your throat. Isn't and that what I said so- in – isn't that what I said last week no. of, like, they just stuck them in a bacta tank? I don't – I don't think you did, but maybe yeah, I'm I, misremembering. I feel like Chris said something along those lines. I'm like, not even. They put him yeah, on a well, gurney with a bunch of lights over him. Well, that's what yeah, I it's said. got to be better tank, on the person like, than tanks here. don't exist anymore. I don't know what it means. That, yeah, that's got to be better than, like, submerging people underwater and expecting them to be okay. Like, it's not underwater. They're, they're suspending them in a gel that does right. space magic to regenerate cell growth. That's the thing. You, I mean, again, that's why I keep referring yes, to Star I'm Wars. Dork. 
every time we talk about Star Wars, like it's fucking it's fantasy. Just there's no explanation that makes sense yeah. for any of this. It's all space magic. Leave it alone. So, well, speaking of clearly things that... the force is generated by uh, tiny microorganisms that exist in your cells. Ugh. How many metachlorians does Coyote Mundi have? <laughs> that, might have only <laughs> that might only be the only time ever I keep I purposefully keep moving of a of one of the <laughs> mics. Thirteen thousand five hundred. Oh, uh, so he's a weak shit as long as as well as being like a traitor and like a war criminal and shit. That's, that's like Not about a traitor, a war criminal. That's like about average. Listen, if any, if this podcast and the weird EU discussions we've had have taught me anything, it's that just like most senators, all of the Jedi are war criminals. Oh yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up is, you know, the weird guy that recognizes because of plot convenience recognizes that the red is salt. Mm-hmm. If you apply any logic to that scene, it's the most batshit fucking scene in maybe any of the movies. This man is on an alien planet he knows nothing about. And he sees a white no powder. Idea, has no idea what the atmosphere is like. Only can take it on, on only can take it on the barest of fucking warnings that it even has oxygen as he plummets towards it because he's getting fired at by one of the biggest star destroyers that ever existed lands is in a cavern immediately leaves to a trench sees his commanding officer put his foot out and sees red and is immediately like i want to lick that so he licks well, it well i don't think it was the rock he was licking the the the, the salt red. like powder but how did he know it was salt? He just he looked he down, it. he saw the powder, his eyes went all wide, like the anime sparkle, and he just like That's the thing, like it's such it's such <laughs> fucking last brain cell thought process, just like, I wonder what that is. Let me put well, it I'm to my die. fucking tongue. <laughs> well, I'm gonna die anyway. The fifth order or whatever is gonna fucking kill me out here. Maybe this, so I'll just Maybe this is poison, maybe it'll kill me. Just yeah, it. he's Oh, Arstic. Mm. This is like <laughs> Ben just fell out of his seat. It it really is just like this is a death that would have happened on Star Trek the original series by a red shirt. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. Yes! It literally is just like the, the away <laughs> team with the one random red shirt appears on a random planet and they're walking around and it's like oh well I wonder what this is under that <laughs> dead because he was poisoned. And then Captain James T. Kirk has to figure out for the rest of the episode while Spock says, what the fuck are you doing? Like, why he was poisoned by the thing that he put his fucking hand in the dirt with and fucking licked off his hand. It's nuts! That would that would have been the most Star Trek thing to ever happen. Yeah, it's the most Star Trek thing. It really would have. It's like, well, it's salt. Why did he die? Oh, his cholesterol was very high. <laughs> <laughs> well we solved high cholesterol centuries ago why exactly is that well he, he stuck his hand into to red salt and just kind of licked it and said ah and then he died of a salt overdose what the fuck was he thinking jesus christ this fucking movie my favorite character in this movie is han solo Because he got out ahead of time. Because we don't see him. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My no, favorite character I, in this... You know what? No, I'm on board with Ben. My I favorite wanted... character in this movie is Han Solo, because he's the only character who's not ruined by this movie. Exactly. Like, I oh, wanted to say... The whole time I'm sitting here like, <laughs> Leia makes this movie. Leia is what gets me through this movie. And then fucking the bridge blows up, and Leia's Superman's back to the ship, and then I'm sad again. Yeah, it was. I pretty much neglected any notes I made for these movies, other than they might be giants. But I was really obsessed with Salt Lake guy. Well, he, I think he's my new favorite character in this movie. 
Salt Lake guy. Yeah. Salty Pete. He leads Salty with Salty Pete, Pete leads with his tongue, baby. <laughs> Man, that's that's got to be top five when we when we finally get to a point where we make T-shirts. Salty Pete leads with his tongue is like top five, right? <laughs> This has been Star Wars every week forever. Good night. <laughs> we're we're really in and off with Salty Pete leading with his tongue. Is that, is that where is that where we're at right now? I have deemed it so. Oh fuck. Hey, if you enjoyed us, thought we were funny, like our content, or just really love our suffering and want to hear more of it, we're available all over the place and release episodes every Wednesday around 12 Eastern Standard Time. You can find us on Spotify, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Player FM, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and in a unique format over on YouTube that our fans seem to dig. You can join in on the conversation over on Twitter as well, at SWEWF. We're quite active and love to hear from our fans. Sincerely, though. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to spend with us on this car crash of a ride.